Uh, thanks for the introduction, and I will share our work uh, about uh, ABE for DFA. So, so first, uh, in, in an ABE schemes, so the, the ciphertext is uh, corresponding with uh, attribute X, and the secret key is corresponding with some policies. So uh, if the attribute is satisfied, uh, is satisfied policy, then we can, we can recover the message using this secret key. Otherwise, we require that the message is hidden, even we have the secret key, and uh, this should be held even if we have uh, more, more, secret, uh, more secret keys. So uh, in this talk, I will focus on AB for DFA. So where the policy is described by a deterministic finite automata. So l let me quickly re review the notion using this example about uh, DFA. So, so DFA has, uh, this DFA has uh, two, two states. So at the beginning, when we run the DFA, we start from state one. The machine is in state one. And then it will run in several stages. And at each, each stage, it will read one bit. And when, when they read one bit, it will change the state. So this is, this is described by the transition functions. We, we, we write it using the arrows. So the lower arrow says that if the machine is in state one and input is zero, then we will move to state two. So when we read all the bit, we will, we will reach some state. If the state is two, which is called the accept state, we will accept the, the input, otherwise we, we just reject. So I want to remind you that the DFA defined regular language. So I write the regular expression here. So sometimes we call it AB for regular language. So the advantage is that uh, this allows us to have an uh, attribute x with arbitrary size. This is different from uh, traditional ABE for circuit. The input is bounded, so which is very useful for some uh, application like uh, text return, where the data can, can be very long. So for this very useful primitive, we have had some constructions, but all of them require Q-type assumptions. The key point is that uh, the complexity of the assumption related to the length of input x, that means it's unbounded, it's, it's not very good. So in, in our work, we give a first AB scheme for DFA from k -linear assumption. This is a static assumption, the complexity is constant. So in this talk, I have to explain the, our, our idea using bilinear group of a composite order but I promise you that everything I will told you can be translated into a prime order group and can be based on k-linear assumption. So the first thing is uh, how to realize the functionalities. So that means we have a, a ciphertext for x and a secret key for f, and then we can decrypt if x satisfies f. So the first thing is in a ciphertext, we have a for ran randomness. So this basically, basically corresponding to the four steps when we run the DFAF on this input. Because, because this means that uh, we, we are at the step zeros. We read no bit. So S1 means we at the uh, stay, uh, step one. We have, read, we, we have read the first zero, and so on. Then in the secret key, we have two randomness, D1 and D2. This basically means that the D1 is for the uh, uh, state one, D2 is for the state two. So we use a small dot to save the space. So actually, when you, when you decrypt using the secret key and uh, to decrypt the ciphertext, we actually compute some values corresponding to this D and S. So let me first tell you the correspondence between the values and the, the execution of DFA, and I'll tell you the structure of secret key and the ciphertext. So in the first step, we said that we always start from the start state one. So in, in stage one, we're at the st state one. So we'll compute a value corresponding to S0 and a D1. So in, in our construction and the basic order pairing based one, so we compute the product of these two values. Then we actually depict the transition function like this. So the dot here in this column basically means the same state, but for the step, step one, for the next step. So because we are in the state one, so follow this line, we will move to state two. So this basically corresponding to these values. So actually, we need to compute S1, D2 from D0, uh, S0, D1 we have obtained. 
So then we continue this process, compute S2, D1, S3, D2, according to the state we can reach in each step. Then finally, we will reach this, uh, these values, and the, and the state two is the accept state. So it should be used, use this value to recover the message. So generally, we will do this. If we can reach UI after reading I bit, then we will compute this can, these uh, values. Okay, let me tell you the uh, structure. So you need to do something for the start and uh, connect to the message, but we focus on the transitional part. So for this part, we want to compute the, this value from the previous values. We use a uh, uh, sub-ciphertext encoding the first zero and a sub-secret key encoding these uh, transitions. So we, do, we, we choose a public parameter, Z and a W, which we will publish in master public key in the proper form. They will actually encrypt the D1 and the D2 in this form, which is an algorithm-like one, but share the randomness. Then for the ciphertext, we connect the S0 and the S1 using this structure, so that we are not recovering S1, D2 individually. We actually recover the difference of these two values, such that we can move from S0, D1 to S1, D2. So for all other transitions, we can do the same things. For example, for the I0, we use the same structure, but use different S. We use SI and uh, SI minus one and SI. For other transition from U to V, like we just replace DU, DV, the corresponding random, uh, random values in the place of D1 and D2. Also, we, we can hope that we have uh, other symbols in the input. So for this case, we just choose different W for each, each possible symbols. And when, uh, when we have a transition on sigma, we just replace w with the corresponding w. And in the ciphertext, if xi, uh, uh, xi is uh, used to uh, create a use to wxi. So this actually is the structure used in uh, the first AB for DFA from, from Waters. So we use, but we need to change the scheme and we work with composite order group and give a different proof. So we call this warm-up scheme and tell you what kind of things we should do. So this is the takeaway for this part. So for the security, uh, we give these examples, which is shorter. That means from the expression, you can see that it will be rejected by the DFA. So it's basically corresponding to the execution of DFA on this input, and then we need to create a hybrid corresponding to this one. So what, what the hybrid is, so in, in G, G0, it's corresponding to step zero. In step zero, we are in state one, so we, are not in, uh, we, are, we cannot reach uh, state two. So we want to say that uh, S0, D, D2 is still the random. Then in, in G, G1, we look at the step one. So basically that means uh, very similar, that means S1, D, D1 is uh, still the random. Then we'll move to the next hybrid. So in this hybrid, S2 and the D2 is pseudo random because uh, D2 is not reachable. So as we have said that the D2 is a accept state, it's corresponding to the message. So the fact that S2, D2 is pseudo random help us to hide message. So this, proof, this is the high level of the proof. So similar, we have, a gen we have a general way to define hybrid I. If we can reach UI after reading I bit, we will define we, we will define a GI with SI and a DV is pseudo random for all V which is different from UI. So how to real, realize it in the in the secret key and the ciphertext? S and a D from two components. So we need to change the distribution of a ciphertext and a secret key. So this one is very standard for dual system encryption. The key point is here. We add the delta IV here. So we define it in this form, which depends on whether V is corresponding to the UI. And this means we hide the DV by delta if V is not uh, reachable after reading IBIT. Otherwise, it's just uh, clear. So at this point, the takeaway is like this. We call this execution graph. So with the green part is basically say what we can recover during the, during the decryption, that means the value we can compute. So the red dot means that uh, in each game, we want to hide. 
So actually, this also we, we, we can read how to assign delta IV from this graph. I actually from 0, 1, 2, and the V is 1, 2. Uh, green dot means we set delta to be 0. Red dot set, said that we set delta to be, uh, set the del delta IV to be delta. So uh, let's move to the proof, but I must say that we need to change a little bit about the definition of hybrid. But let me show you the proof idea and see why we need to check, uh, why we need to change the hybrid. So we have a lot of hybrid. So the key point is to say that the, the adjacent hybrid are, are indistinguishable. So I want to show you the statement like this. This statement is oversimplified. So we need the many steps to connect the left-hand side to the G minus one, GI minus one and the right-hand side to the G, GI. So, but, but in this talk, let me just focus on this very simple statement. As I said, with our definition, it's actually wrong. We can find a U to V sigma, the, the, the transition. The corresponding term is actually distinguishable. So let me tell you the, what kind of a transition. So we focus on sigma equals xi. That means we can actually recover this part, the delta part, in clear, because we know wxi. We can actually decrypt it. So we just compare this to 1. So if we set u is not equal to u i minus 1, that means it cannot reach uh, in the i minus 1 step. That means we set it to be delta. And if we set u be u i, a v to be u i, that means we can reach. So it's clear it's, it, it's actually not equal. So the statement is wrong in this case. So in order to fix it, we need to, we need to require that we have such kind of uh, property. So if you have a connection from V to U on input XI, the corresponding delta should be equal. So in the graph, actually, if you have a line connecting to dot, the dot should be has the same color. So the point is that how to get this. So we require such kind of features. So the point is that we can change the definition of delta by just to pick a V from uh, fi. That means we define fi for each, each hybrid, and from the fi we can define one new delta iv, which satisfies this uh, property. So let me show you an example. It's a little complex uh, execution graph. So this, uh, there are three states. The first is start state, the, second, the, the remaining two is uh, accept state, and we, we draw the transition here. So according to our previous idea, we have a pass from the start state to this, and the other states will be colored in red. That means we will argue that it's uh, pseudo-random. So you can see that there are two lines which is problematic, we have a told you. So the, w the way to fix it is to set like this. So let's come, uh, let's come back to this graph. This is the right hybrid we can use and satisfy the property here. That means the, the set F0 to F3 can be defined like this. We actually don't cover all the all other uh, states here and here. So we have a smaller F1 and a smaller F2. So actually, you don't need to do all the work like this to define the set. We actually can define the set in an iterative way. So actually, the last set F3 corresponding to the accept state. We put all accept state into, into the set. Then we trace back to define F2. So F2 contains all state, which will transit to the state in F3. Then we trace back to find S1. Then we trace back to find F0. So this give, give our definition. So now with the definition here, we have these features. Then we can prove this statement. So the proof is very simple. So for the case sigma equals xi, we, we just use the features. Clearly, the two sides is uh, equal. And for the, the other case, sigma is not equal to xi. We just use ddh to hide the difference between this side. Actually, this is the main idea in the proof. Actually, we have a more idea to, to carry out the 
the actual proof because we still need to change the ciphertext. So we have more idea like this. It's a subgroup hiding, but it's enhanced by giving something like this, but hidden in the uh, L-gamma type encryption. And we also need uh, we also need one more group, uh, one more subgroup to realize such kind of uh, tools. Then, as I told you, that uh, the warm up warm up scheme is not the actual scheme. So to move to the actual scheme, we have to do some change. But I have no time to explain why. But I just tell you the things we want to do. We need two copy of the the public parameter, like this. Then we create create the secret key. For, uh, for each transition and the two copy. It's parallel, just the two copy of the secret key. The complex step is the, the ciphertext part. So for the, for the ciphertext part, for, uh, xi is encoded using a z0 and a w sigma 0 if i is a, I is a urban number. So actually switch between the two, two system, the two parameter depending on the uh, priority of i. So this is our actual scheme. OK, let's summarize the talk. Actually, we give a new technique about how to construct AB for DFA from a standard uh, static assumption. And we really give uh, new concrete schemes. So for, for the future work, uh, I, I think a lattice-based variant should be interesting. And the idea to, to trace the execution of DFA may be useful in another, in another scenario. OK, thank you. That's it. If you have a question, please come to the microphone. We have a lot of time for questions. Uh, I have a, one question. One question. Uh, where did you use the selective security? Ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because oh, we just see this one. So when you define delta, you need the information about x. Ah, okay, okay. So without the information about this, we even don't know how to simulate the first secret key. Mm -hmm. So it's we have to be selective, mm -hmm. and we don't know how to deal with. It. Okay, thanks. Ah. Uh, Maybe I'll just shout. Okay. You mentioned you use subgroup hiding. Yeah. Uh, which particular group? Like, can you say more about the group that you use? Uh, so this part. So we actually use uh, subgroup hiding from G1 to G3 and G3 to G2. We use two step. I mean, I mean, when you prove this statement, you need to subgroup hiding step. Are they integers modulo? Sorry, I can. Uh, are they group of integers modulus prime? Or? Uh, this one is just a composite order group. So, but you can translate in the prime order group. It's fine. More questions? Let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>